to Secular. We are joined now by our Senior Counsel for Global Affairs, former Secretary of State and CIA Director, and Congressman from Kansas as well. I want to bring that up, uh, Mike Pompeo. Secretary Pompeo, I know we're going to get to China in a minute, but I did want to remind people, especially because we've got listeners all over the country, in Kansas there's an important vote uh, next week, next Tuesday, August 2nd, and I'll tell you, the, the, abortion, uh, the pro-abortion industry and their allies are dumping money into Kansas. But ACLJ Action, and because of, uh, we've partnered with you on some on ads that we're running, and we can put those up on the screen now for people, it is called, Secretary Pompeo, uh, the Value Them Both Amendment, and it's important that we're letting people know to vote yes on that amendment. But uh, just you just wrote an op-ed, too, uh, in a, the, the newspaper there in Kansas. Uh, tell people about this vote and what you're hearing from on the ground. Well, this is really important. It's uh, five days from now. It's the election Tuesday of next week, August 2nd. I hope every Kansan will get out and vote for this amendment, vote yes on the Value Them Both amendment. There's been so much money, your point's right, uh, so good that ACLJ has been in there working to protect the unborn and to protect these mothers as well. Uh, so much money dumped into the state with misinformation. All this, all this amendment does is it says uh, the Kansas courts that are, are liberal and left have prevented the people from voting on the restrictions, the the the, the, the protection of the unborn that they have wanted for a lawfully long time. And it just says uh, people can vote. We can open up democracy to make sure that we don't have abortion on demand in the state of Kansas, if that's what the people of Kansas want. It's that simple. That's what the amendment does. A lot of folks are saying, oh, this is going to ban this, and it, it yes. does none of those things. It simply says we value both lives, and we want the people of Kansas, consistent with what the Supreme Court ruled a couple weeks back now, we want the people of Kansas to have the opportunity to voice their views on protecting the unborn. It's that simple. It's that decent. It's that basic. I hope everyone will vote yes. And it's one of the first opportunities in the country where people, not just legislatures, but people themselves are going to determine if their legislature has the ability to start legislating. Now that Roe has been overturned and that, that as you said, Roe is no longer hanging right. over these state legislatures. So I, I just wanted to bring that because in Kansas, you may be seeing those ads on social media with uh, Secretary. We put it back on the screen one more time. Uh, one with Secretary Pompeo, one with uh, features a child. It's a, so much bad information out there about this. So encourage your friends, if you're in Kansas, to vote yes. I'll tell you something. I, I'm I'm very glad everybody is working on this issue. I want to turn our attention, Mike, if I can, to China because this is galvanating uh, all the news networks right now. I mean, not just conservative media. This is impacting everywhere. So China's military is now threatening uh, a response if Speaker Pelosi goes through with her visit to Taiwan. Now, the administration is saying that the, our military is saying she's, if she goes there, it could escalate things. What do you make of the saber uh, the saber rattling of China? Especially, you, you've got conservative members of the House and Senate saying they'd go with her too now. It's becoming a big issue for the United States, this visit to Taiwan. What's your sense of China's actual actions here? So I think the first thing we should do is uh, the, the basic principle, which is that the Chinese Communist Party ought not to dictate American policy with respect to any nation. We shouldn't, we shouldn't allow some second-tier diplomat to issue a statement or some whisper campaign to cause the United States to bend a knee to the Chinese Communist Party. It's what we've done for a long time, Jay, right? They tell an airline you can't put Taiwan on your airline route. They tell a Hollywood producer you can't write about China in a certain way. We won't show your movies. They tell an NBA player or someone in the crowd you can't hold up a sign to have the Speaker of the House, the third-ranking federal official, to tell that the Chinese Communist Party can say, you know what, we don't think you should go to this independent nation, Taiwan, and then for us to say, you know what, we're afraid of you, we, we're fearful of you, and not allow her to go, because we don't think our military is capable of keeping the security blanket for the United States of America. Uh, imagine what Vladimir Putin will do. Well, imagine what Chairman Kim will do. Imagine what the Ayatollah will do. If it just takes a press release to frighten the United States of America, this puts us in an incredibly difficult place. And, and I mean, Secretary Pompeo, you think, I mean, she needs to go. That the, the general consensus is, you announce this, we are the United States of America. She's the third ranking uh, uh, elect, uh, executive yeah, but, 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 official, right. I mean, in line to the presidency. And if she wants to go to an allied country, another, another place is not going to tell her us, tell our politicians what to do. But I am nervous now because she's getting this pressure. There are some Democrats standing with her. A lot of Republicans standing with her, which is unique, but she's getting a lot of pressure from the White House and from Kirby and others, National Security Council, that this is too dangerous and not worth it. I think it's worth it, and I think it's a, a, a Secretary Pompeo, it's a statement that needs to be made. I think it's absolutely worth it. I 
I tweeted with a little bit tongue in cheek that I'd go with her last weekend. Um, but I would. This is not partisan. This is about protecting the United States of America and not being bullied by the Chinese Communist Party. Um, I understand sensitivity. We face this all the time in the Trump administration, too, where we would make decisions that protected the American interest without unduly provoking some adversary, right? We were, we were, we were nuanced about how we did it. But once we made a decision, once we announced we were going to sail a vessel through the Strait of Taiwan or we were going to station a soldier in a particular place, if the adversary announced that they were going to do something, we said, we said we were going to do it, we should do it. I hope Speaker Pelosi will do the same thing. She said she was going to travel. She ought to travel. And the United States should support that visit. I'm going to play what, um, what uh, Admiral Kirby, the spokesperson, uh, has said on this because it kind of tells you where the administration is coming from. Take a listen. If she were to not go at this point, would that send a message of weakness to China? I, again, I'm not going to get ahead of the, the speaker's travel, uh, John. The, as far as I know, mm -hmm. she's not, not made any decision and certainly hasn't uh, announced anything. Again, our job is just to make sure she has the context and information available so she can make the best decisions wherever she goes. But, Mike, if, if she decides now after all of this to not go, isn't that exactly what, what Berman asked? Doesn't that send a message of weakness to China about the United States? Uh, of course it does, Jay. Just imagine a couple of scenarios. Imagine uh, a month from now. Uh, China threatens Australia by saying that they won't uh, allow tourists to go travel through the country. And, and we call the Australians and say, don't don't bend a knee. Don't don't listen to them. You should still do what you're going to do. You should still put submarines in the water, whatever it may be. The Australians are going to say, you wouldn't even send your darn speaker to Taiwan. Our, our friends will see this in the same way our adversaries will see weakness. Our friends will see the absence of resolve. So the Australians, the South Koreans, the Japanese, all of our friends and allies in the region We'll say if the United States won't won't do the simple thing of allowing the Speaker of the House to travel to visit Taiwan, why should we take any risk? We're we're going to go. We're going to cuddle up with China. We'll make the best of it, but we can't count on the United States to be our friend and partner in this difficult part of the world. You know this to me because we got President Biden. He's on the. He's going to be on the phone with President Xi tomorrow. I mean, there's a lot of issues they could discuss ultimately. But we're, we're, if you were advising President Biden right now. Of what issues to focus on? What would those be? I mean, there's so, we've heard so many going on domestically: the land purchases, Huawei's on the cell towers. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. But what would your message be? It'd be real simple: the economic warfare you've been conducting against the United States for the last two decades is over. We are no longer going to bend a knee. We're no longer going to turn the other cheek. We're no longer going to permit you to steal American jobs by the millions and American technology by the billions. We're going to defend the things that matter most to America, and here are the here are the here are the policies we're going to execute to deliver on behalf of the American people. He, should, he shouldn't be belligerent. He doesn't need to be hostile. He simply needs to be clear and transparent and resolved. She understands that. Xi Jinping understands that. The Chinese Communist Party understands power. What they what they don't understand is an America that is has an absence of resolve. They will drive a truck through that weakness, Jordan. And that is very risky for the United States over the next weeks and months and years. I, I, I'm, one last thing, uh, Mr. Secretary, and that's this. Uh, we're at a pivotal point. We've talked about the infiltration into, into the academy, into businesses, into the Federal Reserve System. I think it's just worth reiterating what you've said many times about the threat from China. How serious of a threat can it be? The scale of the threat from the Chinese Communist Party rivals the threat that America faced from the Soviet Union. It is even more difficult because of the economic interdependence between the United States, between the West and the Chinese Communist Party. Xi Jinping is intent on making sure our kids and grandkids live in an America that looks more like China than it does our republic. Yeah. We, have, we have every responsibility to push back against that and make sure that the world looks more like America and that America still looks like America another 250 years from now.